Hey guys, it's Troy here. Wanted to show you another one of my Waterman pens out of my collection today. And uh, this one is a, a modern pen. You probably know if you've been watching this channel that I like both vintage and modern Waterman pens. Uh, and this one is one that I had my sights on for a while. This one is called the Le Talon. L apostrophe E T A L O N. It is a French word that is probably best translated into English as the standard. So that's a pretty bold claim to say that this pen is going to be the standard. So from 1996 till about 2004 is when this was produced. Uh, it is a metal lacquered pen put out by Waterman, produced in France, and uh, this particular pen probably sold for about $275 MSRP in its day. I had been looking at these for quite a while. I have seen uh, from various sellers, and uh, it was one of those that was on my hit list that when I came across the right pen at the right price and the right nib, I'd go ahead and go for it. And I did on this particular one. Uh, just to give you a buyer's alert though, when you go searching, you've got to be careful. Uh, there was one website from a seller that quite honestly I trust to give me good quality pens. Uh, and they had this going for about 200 bucks and it was in red rather than this black. And uh, I saw that and I said, okay, cool. And then they had a Waterman Phileas that was also in red uh, in the right nib. So I didn't have one in red. I've got one in blue, one in green, but I did not have a Phileas in red. So I tried to purchase them both, but the shipping was jacked way up to like 25 bucks. And it was going to be by UPS only. I said, that's ridiculous. So I emailed the seller and I said, this is why I'm not buying from you. It's because of this ridiculous shipping rate. Uh, and quite honestly, I've been to that website numerous times and... It's not the first time that I have canceled an order because of that same shipping ridiculous charge. Uh, and uh, so we got into a discussion about how dimensional weight versus actual weight and how they think that UPS is so much better than the United States Postal Service, blah, blah, blah. So in effect, I, I said, fine, you know, forget it. I'm not going to waste my time anymore with you. Um, so, <laughs> you know, for a $250 sale to want me to pay $25 in shipping uh, for something that fits in a box for a pen this size. I mean, come on, ridiculous. So anyway, I, I kept my eyes open when I decided to set my sights to actually move on one to buy one after that uh, failure to purchase. So I found this particular one that was advertised as being fully serviced. Now that doesn't mean it's in the most spectacular shape because I see some micro scratches. It's been used. Uh, and I buy a lot of my pens used. Don't have a problem with that because of the quality that I know I can still probably expect and or change in it to suit my liking. So this one obviously is black with the gold trim and uh, you know it's got that nice little uh, black finial at the top and you've got the Waterman bifurcated clip but it is a different style uh, as you can tell. The clip is very different from some of the others that you may have seen. You've got the gold band here and believe it or not that is a hexagon that is not a dot um, and uh, from bad pictures, you can see, oh, it looks like a dot. Well, actually, it's a hexagon. Why a hexagon? I'm not really sure. I'll try to get you some better pictures of the writing here that is on this particular band. So, then you've got a nice taper down, and you have a, uh, a gold finish down here at the end. Now, this particular pen, like I said, came out in the 1990s, 96 through about 2004. And then here are some of its contemporaries of its day, okay? Um, I mentioned earlier Aphilius. This came out in the 1990s as well, which is not one of their upper end pens at the time. It was actually one of their lower end pens. I picked this up for $40 retail in a gift set, uh, and it was worth every penny of it. Uh, others during its contemporary uh, Waterman experts uh, were out for sale during that time period and also not necessarily in their high end as well. And then the Waterman Edson was out in the 1990s. So if you want to really call something a standard, probably the Edson would be the standard by which you would judge most other pens, uh, from, especially from Waterman at that, ti that time period. So um, now a couple, a couple of things about this particular pen. It is a cartridge converter pen. It is a slip cap. Now, on the slip cap, you get a nice, solid snap. One of the things, and see if we can actually show it to you, you got two little nibs. There's one right there, 
and there's one 180 degrees from it a little tiny nib or nipple there and those are what grip the cap now that two uh, that two nipple cap grip is also you can find that in um, Waterman Karens which are still produced today by Waterman and you have the very same thing going on there some people have had problems with them I have not had any kind of problem at all with the, the cap gripper so you've got those two there now compare that to the Edson that came out in the 1990s and you've got four on there and these are bigger and springier but you still got the same good solid snap on that so to give you an idea all right so these were the pens uh, of its day probably uh, you know 1990s up to early 2000s that Waterman was producing uh, certainly not an exhaustive list but these are happened to be ones that I pulled out of my drawer and the Etalon was probably replaced by this one right here this particular night and day is the exception and uh, it is a uh, higher-end pen that Waterman doth manufacture, and these are still available today. Another slip top, and you can see this one is designed very differently. It's got the square. This one is not the slim, the slim model. I saw a lot of the slims. Not what I wanted. I wanted the, uh, the night and day pattern, and I wanted the oversized, so that's what I ended up getting. And usually these have got some very good nibs. And I had to flush this one out really good after getting it. Uh, and now, uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? So, you, it is a cartridge converter pen, like I was saying. And you open this up. And it takes the typical Waterman converter. I did not put a cartridge in. It did come with a converter. I have a bunch of Waterman converters. Uh, but I chose to use the one that came with it. Uh, I got a bunch of Waterman cartridges too, but it's got a little um, O-ring here to help get a pretty good seal on that. All right, this has a really nice, uh, albeit smooth, section here. Uh, some people love smooth sections, some not so much, but it's big enough in order to be able to hold and grip uh, thoroughly and not have any issues with it. So you get a nice uh, gold trim there, and you can see it's got gold trim all the way down, and let me show you again. So this is where the fitting is for you to screw on, but all this has got the same gold trim here, right where you got those cap grippers as well. This particular one has a beautiful nib on it, and I'll get you a better close-up picture of that, but it has a, as I recall on this one, it has an 18 karat nib. And like I was showing you earlier, and a real smooth and secure, crisp snap. I love to hear a good crisp snap because you know it's secure. This particular pen, is, since it's all made of metal, it is a little beefy. So uh, I don't mean necessarily in terms of girth, but in terms of weight, since it is a lacquered metal. And you can definitely feel the little bit of heft that comes in it. It's not especially short. I, I've, I've heard of some people complain about the shortness of these things. This one actually is a pretty decent length, and it is comfortable for me to be able to use. And there is a good amount of heft in that cap. It does post securely it's not going to come off and it does back weight that pen but not as much as you think because when you pick up that particular cap and you hold on to it you're thinking that's going to throw off the balance it does just a hair but not as bad as you would think so i'll tell you what i'll do is um i will give you some uh information on this particular pen as far as its its dimensions because you can still find these uh on ebay there are sellers you sellers that uh, have these from time to time uh and i be honest with you they're they're actually worth it i think uh, for the price that you're paying i will tell you this um i paid 75 dollars less on this particular sale than the one i had mentioned from the seller that was trying to uh, you know gouge me on the shipping so you know i waited for a while found one like i said 75 bucks cheaper than they were asking So now that you've seen some statistics on the Waterman L'Etalon, let's go ahead and show you a writing sample so you can see uh, how it performs. This is the, like I said, the Waterman. 
Nate Delon. Or the standard en français. <laughs> For those of you who are bilingual, used to be bilingual, <laughs> and if you don't use a language for decades, it doth perish. All right, so this one has a beautiful medium nib. It is a smooth nib. It actually performs fairly well. It is fairly rigid, so you're not going to get line variation if you're looking for it. Waterman is known for having on their modern pens some nice rigid stiff nibs but also very smooth and good performing nibs. I put into this pen some Monte Verde Midnight Black as I've been using here lately for some reason just because I felt like it. And it lays down a good amount of ink. You know, it's uh, it's a nice nib. It, it's uh, it performs well. I've got no complaints on this particular one. I was happy with it. I was quite happy with how it performed. And it keeps up when I write. So, there you go. Uh, this is the Waterman Les Talons. And if you're looking for a good used Waterman to add to your collection, be on the lookout for these. Uh, if, if you like modern Waterman pens, this is actually a decent standard to have in your collection. And I do recommend them. I Like I said, uh, I had searched for one of these and I had found one a little while ago. And I've been quite happy with it since I've had it and been using it. Uh, and I just recently pulled it out and made it my pen of the day. Probably pen of the whole weekend. So, there you go folks. Thanks for watching. Bye.